Well back during the course of the betting for the Sky Sports Racing Aston Park Stakes Group 3 contest. Middle Earth was a little bit awkward into stride and trails the field early. Desert Hero is well to the fore in company with Kem Han. The all blue Godolphin silks of King of Conquest and blue with the white cap belongs to Flying Honours. Keen is Maxi King as on the outside so Moonstruck and the last two are Salt Bay and Middle Earth. So Desert Hero just being taken back behind Kem Han. Kem Han and King of Conquest are the first two. Racing in third is Desert Hero, Scarlet Sleeve Jacket, so moonstruck. A little bit keen on this first run for quite a while, just head pointed to the sky intermittently. Racing in fifth place is Maxi King, then behind these, Flying Honours with Salt Bay and Middle Earth settles at the back of the pack. So Kem Han, a little bit like when scoring at Kempton last time, is having a pretty soft and uncontested lead by two lengths from Desert Hero in second place, who's half a length away from King of Conquest in third. Racing in fourth place is Maxi King in fifth now is so moonstruck. Salt Bay has gone past Flying Honours and Middle Earth is at the back of the pack. Kem Han's rider, Pat Cosgrave, just took a look in his mirrors and sees as he turns left-handed out of the back straight that he has just over a length in hand. Desert Hero on the inside of King of Conquest, a length and a half back to Maxi King who's on the inner of So Moonstruck, then Salt Bay, the horse with the white face, the chestnut in sixth place, and then towards the back we still have both Flying Honours and Middle Earth who's ridden quietly. So on the front end it is still Kem Hard, who's about to turn back towards home, five furlongs to race in the Sky Sports Racing Aston Park Stakes Group 3 contest. Desert Hero in second place, but a little bit keen, but got a nice track position. Racing in third is King of Conquest, then Maxi King, sixth place for So Moonstruck. Then Salt Bay as they make their way up the straight. And just moving forward, William Buick just possibly trying to trap Desert Hero in behind Kem Hart, who, remember, is an outsider here. And first to make the move is King of Conquest. So King of Conquest leads Desert Hero, just having to use a little bit to get off the heels of Kem Hart. Others trying to improve. Middle Earth is certainly one of those. And amongst horses, Maxi King. Kem Hart still hanging tough with King of Conquest on the outside. Desert Hero just taking a little while to pick up with two furlongs to go and hanging in behind slightly as King of Conquest is threatening to take some decent scalps here Middle Earth is back in second place Desert Hero cannot go on Kemhart sticking on well enough for third but it's King of Conquest, Middle Earth is coming late now Middle Earth rearing down on King of Conquest King of Conquest for Middle Earth Middle Earth maybe narrowly the two of them sprinted for the line Middle Earth for King of Conquest Kemhart was back in third Maxi King disappointing Desert Hero maybe gave it away beforehand they were at full pelt here, and the heads are going different ways. On even strides, I think Middle Earth has just got up, but was it an even stride? Maybe just the force on the inside. If so, it's only in the last couple of strides. But the two of them, notably, were absolutely flying there as they hit the line. And Middle Earth's done well to make up a couple of lengths on King of Conquest. He was given a beautiful ride by William Buick. Middle Earth was dropped in behind when King of Conquest went for home. Middle Earth has gone with him. Two good rides. Has a Sheen Murphy come from last to first? It's taking a while, this photograph. Here we go. Number seven, Middle Earth. The Melrose winner Second, is now the Aston five. Park Third, winner two, in the colours of Qatar Bloodstock and Kieran Meyer for John and Thady Gosden and a Sheen Murphy. Right, Jason, at this point, it looks like Will Buick is home, but... Yeah, he committed, didn't he? He went, he went and... and it looked as if he'd completely taken the race apart. I mean, um, George Baker and Pat Cosgrave, they're going to be pleased with Kemham because he went that really slow tempo early on and it turned into a dash. Yeah, interesting that turning in for the home straight, Pat Cosgrave decided to stay on that far side rail rather than go up the middle of the track, which made things a little bit trickier, but it turned out William Buick was in that perfect spot. I thought he was getting a run on the field. Yeah, he, he's gone, gone away, and Arsheen, who stayed on the paint, good old-fashioned jockey's ride, bit of luck needed, but thankfully it opened up for him, and he, he's literally come and mugged his old foe on the line. Do you know who's going to be incredibly excited? Kieran Ma, because he is part owner of this horse. He's also a trainer in Australia. He's a massive trainer in Australia. Melbourne Cup winning trainer. He's got a huge amount of horses. He has bought into this horse to take him down to the Melbourne Cup in the future. And the way he's shown a brilliant turn of foot in the closing stages is super exciting. I wonder how that felt on board. Well, firstly, did you think you won a sheen? I wasn't sure. I thought it was very tight, Ollie, so uh, very lucky and 
Thanks to everyone at Clarehaven because this horse has been expertly prepared. This was the plan and I'm glad it came off. Yeah, it sure did. Um, he strikes me as a, a horse that would, that would go really well in a, in a hard week. Is that the plan for him? Yeah, you're dead right, Ollie. The plan was run today and then hopefully that would bring him forward for the hard week at Royal Ascot. And what about, I mean, Cheska was just alluding to, to Kieran, one of, one of the, uh, the, the men involved in this horse. Would it be the plan to go down under with him at the end of the year? Yeah, you're dead right, Ollie. Yeah. He has some Australian partners and they'd love to aim him at the Melbourne Cup. And I felt we went very steady today. He turned into a sprint and uh, he did very well to win, Ollie. I was going to say, would you upgrade that performance significantly given how the race unfolded? Yeah, absolutely. He wears a stalls rogue uh, in the gate and... Um, he just didn't jump for me and I couldn't rev him up first run of the year, but I'm delighted with the way he finished off. And to do it in these silks as well, I know that will mean a lot to you. Yeah, and Sheikh Farah will be watching, he'll be thrilled. Well done. Thank you, Al. Led up by Kieran there on the far side, Sheen Murphy. Not easy, Middle Earth. Made a real good job of it. Look at this, Will Buick in the box seat, reeled in on the far side by Middle Earth in the Qatar Racing Colours, Kieran Meyer. Also in partnership, as Francesca said. What happened to Desert Hero? The warning signs were there. They were, yeah. Obviously, too wound up beforehand, wasn't he? And, you know, he was a, he was a negative. The way he gets so fractious, it's a concern, and we've got to keep an eye on that going forward. Yeah, he's one of those horses that you probably just really wish he'd just relax, because he probably is one that trains potentially a little bit on his nerves. He keeps himself very fit.